This weighs just 1.16 kgs. The Book 2 360 is hardly 11 millimeters thick. It's a 2-in-1 powered by Intel's 12th gen CPUs and it's got 16 gigs of faster DDR5 RAM. It's got a full HD OLED panel, a very classy looking metallic body and it flips right around to become a tablet touch enabled with S Pen compatibility. And if you're already in the Samsung ecosystem, this will work more seamlessly between your devices than any other Windows laptop. Now all of this is really good to hear but is it meant for you? Let's dive right in. This laptop is geared more for portability and versatility rather than performance. It's only when you lift it, you realize how freaking lightweight this is. I mean, of course, you get all Windows features, you get to use it like a laptop and a tablet. You can place it in different ways and configurations as you please. It's got a touch screen, you can write and highlight stuff as and when you want. And because it's so light and so thin, it feels effortless to carry it and use it. And if this kind of portability and versatility is a need, that's when you should consider the Galaxy Book 2 lineup. And then you can ask the next question, which is, would it do the work that you need it to do? So let's talk about performance. So as I said before, it's powered by the latest 12th gen Intel CPUs. There's Core i5 and Core i7, uh, with the Core i7 being a tad bit better in performance. Here in front of you is the complete lineup along with the variants and their pricing. And both the CPUs are very capable. And so it's perfect for general office use like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Chrome, music videos, Zoom or Teams or Skype calls. And you can do all of that simultaneously. Heck, you can even open up Illustrator and Photoshop and do some light graphic work. In terms of ports, on the left side, the Book 2 has a Thunderbolt 4 port, a Type-C port and an HDMI port for connecting directly with external monitors. The Thunderbolt 4 port is really cool. I mean, you can attach so many devices to it and it's got really fast transfer speeds. On the right side, you've got the microSD card slot, the headphone jack and a USB 3.2 port. There's a fingerprint reader right here which is also the power key and can be used to log into Windows. And the front camera here, it does not support Windows Hello facial recognition feature. Just something I thought I'll highlight. Now, this is not the most ideal for heavy or professional grade work. I mean, if you're a professional, you already know that and if you're aspiring to be one, I would recommend that you get a bigger machine that can pack more power this is too compact to be able to deliver that kind of power. And also talking about heat management, it's a very compact design. And the only way heat is coming out is either from this grill right behind the monitor or the grill uh, at the bottom of the laptop. That's pretty much it. Now, because this is powered by the U-series Intel 12 gen CPUs, uh, they tend to consume less power. That's why they're more battery efficient and they also dissipate less heat, especially when compared to the P-series or the higher edge series. But sure, if you're going to overload this with a bunch of chrome tabs, you're going to drive up the heat, the fans are going to turn on, and you're going to be able to feel that heat. And especially if you're sitting in a room that's not air conditioned or you're sitting outside and it's already pretty hot, this is going to feel really hot in that case. So yeah, just something to be aware of. Uh, but other than that, I really had no issues. I mean, launching apps, uh, moving between them quickly, uh, getting in and out of calls, it was all a breeze, very smooth, and I did not really face any lag. All right, now let's talk about battery and charging. So it comes with a 65 watt charger and the laptop takes about two hours to charge from zero to 100%. Now this 65 watt charger uh, can be used to charge all your phones and tablets that support type C charging. So one charger for all. And this charger is not your regular big laptop charger. I mean, look at it. It's just a bigger phone charger, that's all. And this has a 61 watt hour battery capacity and battery drain is very subjective. I mean. You can drain it in three hours or you can make it last 12 or 15 hours. It all depends on how you use it. But in my brief testing, and I'll give you the split, it lasted me about eight hours. So I spent three hours on scripting my videos. So it was basically working on a document, two hours on YouTube, and then two hours of web browsing. So that's seven hours. And then for about 10 to 12 hours, it was just on standby, eating 1% every hour. So all in all, I would say this can last you eight hours. And if you think about it, that's basically one working day. You, you know, disconnect at about nine and you work all the way till five or six and you're done. But do note, this is all regular office usage. None of those high-end heavy workflow applications. I mean, those are gonna drain your battery faster. If you're gaming, you're gonna drain it faster. So bear that in mind. Now let's talk about the software. And we all know that it's running Windows 11, but the Galaxy Book 2 experience is all about how it integrates and works really well with your other Galaxy devices like the Galaxy phones and tablets. 
To start with, you can very easily share files between the Galaxy Book 2 and your Galaxy tablet or your Galaxy phone. Using Quick Share, you can instantly send very large files very quickly and vice versa. So take for example, I've got an image here. I tap on share, then on quick share and my Galaxy book will show up as a nearby device. I tap on it and the file gets transferred just like that. And then if you've got a Galaxy tab from the S7 or the S8 series, you can wirelessly set them up as a secondary display and just have a more flexible and productive two screen setup. There's also a link to Windows, but that's not exclusive to the Galaxy Book 2. I've done a full video explaining everything it can do. I'll leave a link here. But essentially, if you hook up your phone with the Galaxy Book 2 and you turn on link to Windows, you can receive notifications on your computer. Uh, you can send and receive messages and you can even open up up to five apps simultaneously on your laptop. But those are apps that are actually on your phone and you can just use it on your machine. So that's link to Windows again, link here. There's also Samsung Notes on Book 2, which is obviously synced with Samsung Notes on your Galaxy phones and tablets. And of course, if you use the S Pen, you get that same fluidic note-taking experience. And if you do have smart devices connected to your phone using SmartThings app, that too, you can now fire up on the Book 2 and control your devices from right here. You can also get a very quick view of where all your Galaxy devices are and it remotely manage them. And now let's talk about that display. So this is a full HD 13.3 inch 60 Hertz AMOLED screen and AMOLED as you know, it's color rich, super punchy and this has 120% color volume. So it's a very color accurate display. Now the variant I have here is the Book 2 360 and this has a 13.3 inch display and that being full HD is fine. The problem, however, is that the Book 2 Pro and the Book 2 Pro 360, they both have 15.6 inch display variants as well, but they're also capped at Full HD. I mean, if not 4K, at least they could have been 1440p in my opinion. But of course, I understand that Full HD will save some battery on those computers and it may have been a conscious decision. And sure, if you really want it, you can hook them up using the HDMI port to 4K or 1440p displays if you really want to. But just something I thought I'll highlight. Now the display has a peak brightness of 400 nits and in HDR mode, it can deliver up to 500 nits. So outdoors, even in bright sunlight, readability or viewability was really not much of an issue. Sure, there were some reflections, but that you can sometimes fix by playing with the screen angle, but sure they are there. Also, this is a touch screen, which becomes even more useful when you flip it around and then you can use it as a slate or a tablet. But Windows 11 does not have a dedicated tablet mode like Windows 10 did and that is a bit of a setback. But if you're just using the touchscreen for you know, general browsing or for the S Pen, for that it's just fine. Let me touch upon the keyboard now. It's a standard keyboard, it's got three levels of brightness and it sounds quite nice. I mean, it's not the best typing experience, but I still really like it. And the fact it's so thin, I think for that, it's pretty good. The trackpad is decently sized. You'll get a bigger one with the 15 inch variant, but this is good enough for me at least to be honest. And I had no issues uh, using it. And the trackpad clicks, they're very like distinct and crisp. I mean, they're very accurate. So, you know, they're not like flimsy or loose and that I think is really good. The palm rest area is probably something that might feel smaller to those with large hands. It was just okay for me, but I'm a short guy. And so if you're someone with bigger hands, just try this first before you really make that purchase or otherwise there's the 15 inch variant uh, that comes in the Book 2 Pro series, which you may want to explore. And lastly, quickly touching upon the speakers, they're very average. I mean, they're there so you can listen to at least something, but if you're in a slightly noisy environment, if you're outdoors, you're gonna need a pair of earphones or headphones. I mean, they're just these small uh, two watt speakers. And, you know, given how thin this is, there's very less air that, you know, they can play with to really add that boom to the sound. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. All right, conclusion time. So this is a great laptop to think about if you're looking for an ultra portable, ultra thin, versatile laptop with a touch screen. And if those things are your needs, that's when you should think about the Galaxy Book 2 lineup. Then you can look at your requirement. If it's super smooth, office level work, go for it. But if it's high intensity workflow stuff, then no. Because you know, 
These laptops are capped at 16 gigs of RAM and you may need more. Also, they feature the uh, Intel U series and the P series, the P series being better than the U series, but they're still not meant for heavy workflows. Uh, for those, there's either the H series or the Core i9 series, which these laptops don't have. And so if you're a casual or a business user and you're looking for a performance laptop that can do those things, this is a great laptop for that. And if you're already in the Galaxy ecosystem, this is a no brainer. Anyway, that's it from me guys in the Galaxy Book 2 360. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. And as always guys, I hope this was really useful. And if it was, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon and mark all. I'll see you guys in the next one.